to celebrate Bazooka Bubblegum's 75th anniversary. We're taking a look at how a piece of gum with a unique name transformed an industry. From its history to its one-of-a-kind flavor. The taste of Bazooka, whoever created it 75 years ago, knew what they were doing. Wild prizes. There was a knife. There was a, a, a pocket knife that my mother said no. She was like, no, you're not, no. Legendary Bazooka Joe and the gang. They're, they're kind of like the Avengers. Um, they all made up that fun, kind of ragtag bunch. And iconic comics. You read either comic books, the cereal box, and all the stuff that's on the cereal box, or you had your Bazooka Joes. To its cultural impact today. You know, and kids and skateboarders will wear Bazooka Joe because he's that thing. We'll share how a bubble gum became a pop icon. Bazooka turns 75. My name is Arthur Shoren. There were four Shoren brothers. The business started in 1938. The four brothers started to make an adult chewing gum called Topps Chewing Gum, and they struggled like crazy. Up to that point, they were making penny gum, pepsin, spearmint, ginger, flavors like that. But 1947, after sugar rationing ends, they get into doing bubble gum with bazooka. They did call bazooka originally the atom bubble gum. Just like they like superheroes, kids take on that persona, and I'm chewing the atom bubble gum. So at the top, we have the oldest. So these are just the penny pieces. We have 1949 Adam Bubblegum, and this one's probably the first wax wrapper, so it still says Adam on it. That might be 1953, 54. And then they replace Adam with tops at the top there with bazooka. They start getting into multi flavors, grape, more original, and then cherry. Cherry five cent was my go to, and I would do five pieces just jammed into my cheek. You got a great tasting piece of gum, you got the chance to win some prizes. You got engaged with some fun artwork and gags, and then, you know, on top of it, you get a little fortune to boot. All for, at that time, you know, a penny or five or ten cents. The name Bazooka having some reference to the weapon Bazooka, that's just not so. It had to do with a, an ocarina, which was an instrument also called a sweet potato, played by a guy by the name of Bob Burns. And they just thought that was a very fun name. They came out with a bang because they knew all the marketing channels. They were very good promoters. Took out the biggest ads, full color. And the reason for success was the fact that they gave premiums to the retailers. In this particular promotion, you see three bottles of Bufferin. 75 cents extra profit for the retailer. Fleer was the dominant brand. Then we became 10% of the market, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50% of the market. And so Bazooka grew as not just a national, but an international brand. If you're not thinking about other meanings of Bazooka, you're thinking about the gum. The one thing that hasn't changed is the taste. And people have tried to copy it, emulate it around the world. Whoever created it 75 years ago knew what they were doing. As pretty much the youngest person working at Tops, it was my job to be the guinea pig and taste them. But then they gave me one, so we're really excited about this one, taste it. And they didn't tell me what it was. I tasted it, what was that? I said, well, we were thinking it would be nice to have a special flavor of bazooka that would come out around Thanksgiving. There would be turkey and cranberry flavor. So it, it never went anywhere outside of my mouth, I think. The formula itself for Bazooka is as secret as the formula for Coca-Cola. There was no one employee that ever knew the entire formula. This is the oldest piece of one cent Bazooka uh, in existence. Two pieces of gum. This is your premium, so this would be for a secret code set. And this is our gum. Make sure I get them separated first. Not bad. I'm sensing some, some familiar flavors. It's got the flavor, it's there. The flavor of bazooka is really special. So when we sold baseball cards, or wacky packages, or a whole bunch of other things, the gum that came inside the packages was wintergreen flavor, also known by kids as the medicine flavor. Bazooka was a fruit flavor and a really good one. And as a result, it became a bubblegum of choice. You gotta suck it first. 
You know what I mean? Because they kind of hard. <laughs> but once you get it to the right temperature and texture, you can start molding it, then you can get it to the right consistency, then you start blowing some bubbles. It's a whole system, a whole scientific system of how you have to engage with it in your mouth. This is what I like to do. You know, I got in them. Now it's hard. It's like candy. Now I'm taking it down. You open up your comic. You read either comic books, the cereal box, and all the stuff that's on the cereal box, or you had your Bazooka Joes. That was the entertainment. Yeah, before smartphones, uh, yeah, they were, they were the early TikTok, uh, Instagram Reel, Vines. This quick storytelling and sequential art in such a small amount of time, with this small amount of space that's there. You can't put too much wording there. That is genius. It was these corny comics for kids, but they were almost entirely driven, shaped, and created by all these like legends of underground comics. I did the fortunes until they got upset with some of the fortunes. I just took the I Ching and translated them into present day English. Um, and as a result, one of the fortunes ended up being, you will grow up to be the Secretary General of the United Nations. I had no idea this was a hot button topic outside of Brooklyn and Manhattan, but uh, so many complaints came in for suggesting that this communist organization should be an aspirational thing for young children, that they had to do a lot of PR and apologies. I wrote uh, many of the, um, of the fortunes for that series. If mom says no, there's always dad. To her is human, so what is your excuse? You know, he who eats ice cream is a Sunday driver. Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-E. Yeah, so it, it was a combination of uh, provocative ones, dad jokes, corny jokes, uh, puns. I wrote about 75 of them. There's got to be some kind of counterculture thing that, that made it into the ink in a way. Because Art Spiegelman, this guy's got Pulitzers, you know, from Mouse. It started with me being a summer hire taken on by the head of that small department, Woody Gelman. And I was obsessed with the artists who had worked for MAD when it was a comic book and in its earliest days. And a lot of those people migrated into doing freelance work for Tops. Crack! Is he a wonderful picture, Joe? He always hits their bats no matter where they hold them. <laughs> Bazooka Joe was at a diner and he's like, I ordered some apple water and it looks like, it looks like peach. The guy behind the counter is like, so what does it taste like? And Bazooka Joe's like, I'm not sure. And he's like, what difference does it make? Hey, carry your bag, sir. And how much do you charge? Well, 50 cents for the first bag and 15 cents for the other. And the guy says, okay, I'll carry the first bag and you carry the other. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a, an LOL moment with a Bazooka Joe comic, but that's the charm and the beauty of them. It was aspirational too, because I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. So it was like one more thing that validated the experience. I might not be where I am right now without Bazooka Joe bubblegum. There have been other bubblegums. There have been other classic gums that have survived through the decades. But Bazooka Joe created the eye patch, the hat, the, the cast of characters, but really Bazooka Joe became this great pop cultural icon. Given the billions of chunks of Bazooka bubblegum that uh, Topps was selling annually, Joe became a, an international icon, recognized around the world, Nigeria, Israel, Italy, Switzerland, South America, Australia. So again, he's probably one of the most recognizable icons of, of his time. There was an artist at the time that Woody Gelman brought on board whose name was Wesley Morse. And he is considered really the creator of Bazooka Joe. His son was the prototype for Bazooka Joe, Tally Morse. They wanted Joe to be distinctly different looking than just another character out there. So they put an eye patch on him. And the eye patch was to make him distinctive? It was just something to catch your eye. And that's good design. That eye patch is really, really cool. We think of like Nick Fury, you think of pirates and all this other stuff, but you know, for a little kid to be wearing an eye patch like that. You have Meet Bazooka Joe Gang. So now they have all the characters, they have the comic with the art, 
They have the two pieces still in the one cent pack, and this is basically the first time we see Bazooka Joe and his whole gang. The Bazooka Joe cast is, they're kind of like the Avengers. You know, you got Bazooka Joe, you know, he could be like the Iron Man, and you have all the other ones, and they all made up that fun, kind of ragtag bunch. We've run a few promotions in recent years where winners of those promotions are drawn into Bazooka Joe characters. We even have celebrities who write into us and, and ask us if we can draw them as Bazooka Joe as well. It's really fun to see how happy consumers are to, to be a member of the Bazooka Joe gang and really be integrated into the brand. My mother used to read Bazooka and named me after a Bazooka character, which I never knew. And then I'm reading Bazooka comics and here comes Tuffy, who kind of dresses like me, so I'm like, wait, hold on. And I would say, hey, mom, there's a guy in here named Tuffy. No, he reminded me of you. The thing that I like about the comics is that on the lower um, right-hand side of the comic, there's the thing, just some random item you can order. It's the Bazooka free gift book. Save Bazooka comics for free prizes. A Western Union telegraph set, siren ring, air combat goggles, Seashell hobby kit, western bike saddle, and more! Yeah, you know, see a pocket knife, we'll send you a, you know, fart powder, we'll send you, um, an ant farm, something like that. Yeah, there, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't fly today, but back then, uh, you know, years of fun, my friends, years of fun. Now we had x-ray glasses that, you know, could be used for maybe nefarious purposes, who knows, <laughs> you know. There was a knife, there was a, a, a pocket knife that my mother said no. She was like, no, you're not, no. Sure enough, with a hundred or whatever comics, you can get a Bowie knife in a leather sheath. Coca-Cola means thirst. Disney means entertainment. Bazooka has a specific part of your brain. There's a great potential in taking Bazooka, which is a loved brand, uh, and expanding it. But one time I, I opened up a piece of gum and it said, um, the fortune was angels guide your every step. And I went, oh, Bazooka Joe. So uh, and I just turned this idea into a, a piece of gum being, you know, a guiding light in my life. I just started singing, um, Bazooka Joe says angels guide my every move and I believe him. Um, and it turned into a song about finding truth in obscure little things. Bazooka created the whole concept of edible entertainment 75 years ago, but that didn't just stop with Bazooka. The Bazooka company today has iconic brands like Ring Pop, like Push Pop, Baby Bottle Pop, and the whole Juicy Drop line bring this idea of edible entertainment to life. It all started with Bazooka and Bazooka Joe 75 years ago, and it's still alive today. That is Bazooka Joe. He is corny, he is a throwback. But if you get him far enough, he becomes super hip, right? So he will be a thing. Because that design is so cool and so iconic, um, kids and skateboarders will wear Bazooka Joe because he's that thing. Bazooka Joe will be like a great song that a new generation discovers. I think at the, at the end of time, uh, I, I think Bazooka Gum will, will exist far into the future. My, you know, my great, great, great ancestors will be uh, we chewing Bazooka Gum for sure. We're thrilled to be continuing a 75-year tradition of making people smile. I can't say no to Bazooka Joe. It's Joe. Bazooka! <laughs> Bazooka!
I like my fortune the best. I ate this gum when I was a kid, when I was living on 113th Street. One ticket to Cleveland. Do you want to go by Buffalo? Of course not. I want to go by train. You see these people and, and their face just lights up. It's such a powerful, uh, emotive product.